Hey guys, good morning. Happy Thursday to you all. Happy Thursday, happy Thursday, happy Thursday. Yeah, guys, I am still in bed. Still lying down in bed. Don't get up as yet. I'm just, I was just lying down here and I just decided that I'm just going to give you a little story time. I'm going to tell you about how I become a Christian. Yeah, guys, so before I get into this little story time, please remember to like, share, comment, subscribe, hit that post notification bell. As soon as I drop another video, then you will be the first to be notified. Tell a friend to tell a friend, guys. Road to 1K subscriber. Yeah, guys, so let me start. You know, I, I was in my, I think I was in my late 20s at the time. I had two daughters at the time, just my two daughters. I didn't have my son as yet, but I have my two daughters. And guys, I'm not going to lie to you, I was going through a rough time. Really, really rough time. I had a landlord. Where I was living, I had a landlord that whenever it comes to, like, for instance, the rent, so for instance, the rent is going to do within two or three days' time, that landlord would start cursing everybody in the yard because I guess he probably don't want, when, when his rent, when it's time for me to pay the rent, I said anything to him or whatever, I don't know. But he would curse everybody in the yard. Everybody would curse his wife, he would curse his kids. He just started cursing everybody in the yard, guys. So, I remember that um, there was a church right across the road from where I was living. And I remember my children said to me, um, mommy, can I go to church? And, you know, I just hear a voice say, let them get ready and go. So I said, okay. And I get them ready. And I send them off to church. And I remember I was at home and I was there playing some gospel. And after they gone to church, I started to pray. I said, God, open a door. If you open a door for my kids, they didn't ask God to open a door for me. I asked God to open a door for my kids. And I said to him, I said, I will serve you for the rest of my life. And guys, I'm not going to lie to you. God did open that door. He did open that door. But to show you how the enemy is, guys, let me tell you something. After God opened the door for me and I started traveling, the enemy would do everything for me not to go to a church. I remember there was this church, the church that I baptized in. I got baptized in Guantanamo Bay. And the church that I, got, that I baptized in, guys, the, um, I remember I used to curse all those church people. Curse the mountain of people. I, I didn't even remember that. I had asked God to open the door and I have made him a promise. But what a lot of us do not understand in life, that God is a businessman. He is a businessman. So whenever you make him a promise, or if you ask him, say, God, if you do this for me, I will do that. Trust me, he's going to, come through with his side so it's for you to go through with yours he's gonna keep his side of the bargain it's up to you to keep your side of the bargain so in a way guys i remember i was there and about it took me about let me tell you about two about three years about three years being there before I actually accept Christ. 
about three years now, I remember I, t I asked God to make, to open the door for my kids. And I said, if you do this, I will serve you for the rest of my life. And it takes me, guys, three years before I actually accept Christ. Because I didn't even remember anything about, anything about what I said to God. I did not remember. Like I told God that I remember I used to curse all the church people them. The same church that I got baptized in, I used to curse them out. I just did not like them. And I used to curse Christians on a whole. I was one of those um, sinner and save that curse out Christians. Curse them out people, I'm telling you. And I remember <clears throat> um, one day I was at the store shopping. You know, looking some clothes and stuff like that. Because normally when we get pay, that's what we normally would do. We go to the store. They used to sell a lot of really expensive stuff. Their name brand. Real stuff. And I would go to the store, just buy clothes, shoes, bags. That's what, that's what I would spend my money on. After taking care of my kids back home. Because my two girls, I love them. So I always make sure I take care of them. And then my money that I have left, I would just go ahead and just, just shop. And I remember I was in the store one day, guys, and one of my, she's my church sister now. I remember she was in the, in the store and she said, I'm inviting you to church. And I cursed that woman out. I said, I don't invite me to no church, but now come on no church with no, no, no. Because remember, you guys... So not Christian, but when if me die right now, me I go go heaven, leave uno because the whole on now wicked, and I used to curse them out. People, I'm not gonna lie to you, curse them out. They didn't wanna have anything to do with any church people. And I was there looking at some clothes, and she said to me, "Let me help you pick something out to wear to church." And I said, "I don't want no help from you, and I'm not going to any church." And guys, let me tell you something. The same outfit that she showed me. The same outfit that she showed me. You see, when there is purpose on your life, right? When there is purpose on your life, you can't. You can't run from purpose, you know? You can never run from purpose, guys. Because when she said that to me, when she said that to me, I cursed her out. I said, I don't want any... Um. I don't want you to help me. And I remember I went home. I was talking to this guy. We were friends. I didn't know guys that the guy have. He was with someone else. I didn't know. But the person that he was with. Was in Jamaica. And the person was coming up to work. So it's like the guy don't know how to tell me. That. He was with someone else and she's coming up to work. And I guess that was her, bo his bonafide woman. So anyway, guys, he came to the house and I don't remember what happened between us. But it's like he definitely in the relationship. And guys, I was so heartbroken. I was so heartbroken when he, he ended the relationship between us. And I remember I went into my car and I started to drive. And a voice said to me, while I was driving, a voice said to me, just send the car right over the precipice. And another voice said, no. Just drive down to the ferry landing, park the car, and just relax. And that's what I did, guys. I I listened to the voice that told me not to drive it over the precipice. Because I'm not going to lie to you guys. At that time, I felt like I did not want to live. Because, you know, when you're looking for happiness and you just can't find it, that was what was happening to me at the time. I was looking for happiness. There was It was nowhere to be found. Not knowing that the happiness that I was looking for, it was in Christ. It wasn't in us human being the happiness that i wanted was in christ and anyway guys 
I I drove down to the ferry landing. I parked. I was crying because I just didn't know. You know, just when you want, you just wanted a relationship. You just needed someone to settle down with. You don't want to be going through. You pass through this relationship. It lasted for a couple of months or a year or whatever. And then it ends and you have to start another one. That's that's what I did not want. And that's what that is what was happening to me. Not knowing that God had allowed these things to happen to me so that I can remember the promise that I made to him. So anyway, guys, I'm not going to stay long with this story because this story is very long. The voice said to me, you try everything and everything failed. Why don't you try Jesus? And when I hear the voice say that, it's like something just come over me and said, Go to church tomorrow. It happened this Saturday. And the person and the voice said to me, Go to church tomorrow. Guys, I didn't even have what to wear to church because I was the type of person who used to lo love to wear a lot of skimpy clothes. A lot of skimpy clothes. Short, even though I was so skinny. But I do not wear clothes. I used to look wear skimpy clothes, things that's gonna show me up. Yeah. So it so happened. That I had to go to the store. I had to go to the store. The same outfit that that my church sister was showing me. I had to go and buy that same outfit to wear to church on the morning. You see how awesome God is? He is awesome because it's like God was telling me right there. And then say, okay. You are making plans for something else. But I'm going to wipe that plan out. Hey guys, so when I went to church that day, I never forget. I never forget the feeling that I felt. I've never felt a feeling like that before. I felt this peace. I felt this love. I don't know. Guys, I can't explain to you the feeling that I feel the day, the very first day when I walked into that church, knowing that I am... A child that grew up in church because I grew up with my grandmother. And we have to go to church every every Sunday. Even if we don't stay at a big people church, we have to go to Sunday school. We have to go to Sunday school. And one of my favorite scripture in the Bible is this, that I always remember this. When I was a child growing up, this was one Sunday school lesson that I did not forget. And it is St. John 9 verse 4. It says, I must work the works of him that sent me. While it is day, the night cometh, when no man can work. I always remember that scripture, guys. Always remember it. So you see, in life, because this is not really the end of the story. I'm just going to cut the story right here. Maybe I might give you part two of the story. About me getting baptized, almost married around person. I mean, all of that. But God was on my side. So, the moral of the story is, guys, is that God is a businessman. Never you, never you make him a promise. And don't fulfill your promise that you made to him. Don't go to God and tell God, God, if you do this for me, I will do that for you. God is going to come through with his side of the bargain. It's up to you to go through with yours. And if you don't go through with yours, it's not going to be pretty. It's not going to be pretty, guys. Because for the three years that I've been there, before I got baptized, I got baptized in 2000 and November 2005. Yeah. That's when I got baptized. And for the three years that I've been there, it was never pretty. I was searching for love. I just could not find love. Not realizing that the love that I was looking for, it was in Christ, not in men. So, yeah, guys. So, that is my story. I'm just going to end it right here. Remembering everything you do, always put God first. Always put God first. Let him be the front at all times because when he leads he will never lead you in the wrong path just let him lead you 
and then you follow him so happy thursday guys have a blessed and a pleasant weekend this woman is covered by the blood of christ you can laugh at her you can hate her you can doubt her but you can never take away the blessing that god has in store for her